Hey, this is Bill Mallon, Director of Global Marketing and Communications for Oceaneering. And today we're here at OTC 2018 to take a look at some of the products and solutions we have for our customers. We've got a lot of the subject matter experts here, so let's go and uh, talk to some of them about what we've got in the booth. So now we're here with Nicole Marino. And Nicole, I see we have the uh, R-Walk, uh, not the R-Walks, hey, but the... Can I do that? Yeah, I guess, I guess. <laughs> I guess you can do it. Go ahead, Ron. Hey, you, that's your microphone. All right. So Nicole and I were talking earlier, so I'm, I'm really excited to hear what she's going to tell us about this beautiful piece of equipment we're looking at today. Yes, this is the Arwalk skin. Uh, this is taking a traditional Arwalk uh, system and putting it subsea. Okay. So why would somebody want an Arwalk instead of an Arwalk? Oh, very many advantages. Yep. Um, we're talking about uh, less persons on board, uh, less equipment, mobilization costs, saving on time during pressure testing, uh, many more as well. So do we have the only one out there? We have the best one out there. Okay, tell me why. We have 100% redundancy. Um, we have two different types of, or two different configurations for deployment. We can either uh, deploy uh, connected to the ROV, or we can deploy on the standalone MARS system. And so, have we ever done anything like this before? We have done this in the past, so this is kind of a revival of a mm -hmm. uh, past system, um, but it's new and improved. New and improved version. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thanks, yes, Nicole. Absolutely. All right, and now we're here with Arve Iverson. You had a big day yesterday, the Spotlight of War on Technology. What did we win that for? It was the era of concept, uh, the system that it was a proof of concept uh, project we did for Statoil, where we showed that we could uh, develop, manufacture, and uh, offshore test a self-contained battery-powered ROV system only controlled from onshore by a surface buoy. Where am I piloting it from? You're sitting ashore in one of our mission support centers controlling the vehicle from there. And there's no vessel on the surface during the operation. And how does that benefit the customer? Well, it's to a large extent, it reduces the, uh, the vessel days, uh, marine support vessel days. That's the important bit. And of course, the crewing, the uh, Subject matter experts can sit ashore instead of going offshore, like they would if they were on the. That makes sense. So you have a pilot there, but you can bring in an expert like yourself yeah. if, if there's a challenge, right? Yes. So you don't have to go offshore. That's right. So the ability to respond faster. I'm bringing them in for a few hours instead of going offshore for days or weeks. That so. saves the customer money, I would assume. Yes. And, and, okay. Now we also have the Freedom ROV here, which is which is a big deal. This is just a little model. We don't have one produced yet. Is that correct? That's correct. It's being uh, designed and, uh, at the moment, and uh, this is a completely new concept. It's more like a uh, drone. It's a uh, merger of the, uh, the AUV type vehicle that we know from previously and the ROVs. So it's going to be more resident than the Euro concept. It's going to be designed to be able to stay deployed for maybe six months at a time without any maintenance. So it stays resonant. So in the simplest of terms, and I realize this is simple, but it's basically, it lives in a little garage subsea. And whenever you need it, you, can you fire it up from onshore as well? That's correct. You fire it up and either you can operate it uh, autonomously. That is that you program a mission, it goes out, free swims without tether and does the mission and goes back in the garage. So you can program that and so periodically you can go out and check stuff is that what you're saying and then if you need it to do other stuff you can pilot it from the shore that's, it. that's pretty amazing and uh, the tether can be connected to do this the tether can be connected or disconnected as you need well Arve congratulations again on the spotlight award and thank, thank you. you for taking time to talk to us My pleasure. all right sir thank you <laughs> Miles, I know you, but tell us who you are and what you do for us. Miles Roden. I, I run the uh, the product management for the EdgeSmart product. So it's a brand new product we've been working on. Well, let's come over here and take a look at yeah. it. So our main goal here is to derive or uh, acquire data from a, a vessel or any type of asset and bring it back to a centralized warehouse. Okay, so so tell me again. Let's start again. So like, like a, a vessel, it, it's monitoring vessels. It, it's acquiring data from vessels. Is that right? That's correct. You're looking at uh, anything from... ROV information, crane information. Um, trying to think of some others that uh, would be. So not just vessels. Not just vessels. It can be from trucks. It can be from any type of source. So. And, and on the screen, I mean, I know where they. If I'm an owner, I know where it is. Absolutely. I know what's going on with it. The speed. Yeah. So we're tracking location of it. We know what the speed is. Then you're tracking what's going on with it. So how much is the crane lifting at that time while you were going three knots, four knots at a time? Well, hey, we're sorry to interrupt you, but no, we, no figured, we figured we'd make you work a little bit, Miles. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Miles, thanks so much.
All right, so now we're with Samal. Samal, what do you do for us? I'm a business development manager with the Subsea Products Group. Okay, and what do we have here? So this is a chemical injection valve. It's also known as a chemical throttling valve, or CTV. And it's a product we make in Norway, and they help the operators to reduce cost of the projects by simplifying their umbilicals. Okay, so let, let, let's break it down in some simpler terms. Pretend like I'm a smart eighth grader, all right? Okay. Tell me what it does. Right, so this is like the tap in your kitchen. Right, so if you need water in your house, you're gonna open the tap where you need water. You don't have 20 tubes coming from the water utility company to your house, and then you have one pipe for each thing. So today, what most of the clients do, they call the utility company and say, hey, I need water in my kitchen. Please open that valve. So this allows them to control the flow at the place where they need the chemical delivery. Awesome. Well, Samal, thank you very much for taking some time to explain it to us. Thank you, Bill. And you did the best explanation of anybody so far. <laughs> All right. Thanks thank a you. lot, man. All right. All right, All right. So we've just walked up. And Ryan, Ryan, what do you do for us? Because I know this isn't your gig anymore, but it used to be. Yeah. So I'm, I'm the market intelligence manager. Um, and I look after a lot of what, you know, what's going on in the market and what the, the tea leaves are sort of telling us. But in us. a past life. In a past life, I used to be a subsea engineer and design these. Uh, subsea repair clamps. So tell me what this is, because I'm going to brag on myself sure. a little bit. I had to make that stand down there at the last minute in my shop to hold up this. Is it 6,000 pounds? Yeah, thing's a beast. It's uh, designed to, it's made of a single forging that they cut in half. And uh, it's designed Wait, 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 wait. So, so this thing, they, they cast, it's cast? Yeah, so it, all at it's, once it's, and a then giant, they cut it in half. it's a giant forging. They, they machine it and uh, cut it to cut it to size. And it's designed so it uh, can be deployed. This, this is a diver version. Uh, but they make ROV versions as well, and they're designed to land out on a clamp where you have a, a crack or some sort a of... A crack uh, in what? In, in, the pi- in so, a pipe so itself. So that's why we have the pipe here, yeah, right? Yeah, so you'll have a pipe, and, and you may have a crack in it, or there's a leak you might have detected. So you'll go through, use some of our inspection tools, find where the crack is, and if it's a small enough crack, then we can go ahead and use this clamp to... Uh, isolate that crack and repair it so, and so the pipeline can be operational. So this clamps over the crack, so the crack would be would, inside yeah, of here. Yeah, it would be like somewhere inside of here, and yeah. And then, I mean, these are these are not insignificant bolts right here. Yeah, no, these are real big uh, studs, and they're uh, tensioned down with hydraulic tensioners that the diver will operate, um, or in uh, the case of an ROV, there's an ROV actuated panels. And then, from what I understand, you there's something that clamps onto this and pushes this in, to uh, make the seal in there, and then yep. these are tightened up. I, I, again, I don't know what I'm talking about, but it's what I was told. Sure, yeah. So the the clamp is designed so that when it when it mates up to the pipe, and it's act, and you actuate the ten, the tensioners and the bolts that both the seals and the gripping mechanism. So inside, there's both a seal and a mechanism to grab onto the pipe and hold it structurally in place. Um, some and, and, some of our competition, you have to activate different. Uh, different sets of bolts to do both things and the nice thing about these our design is that you can just mate it all in one sort of foul swoop so it reduces awesome. some of the installation time now i know a lot of times the pipes up sea is underneath i mean it's underneath sand yeah, it'll, and it'll then, be buried or, or there'll be piles of rocks so our on dredging top of it. folks come out there and, and yeah take care so of that. we'll have dredges and uh boat diver or rov type dredges that can go out and uh help you excavate around where the where the leak is well, perfect. Well, I know this isn't your gig anymore. Sure, but thank no you problem. For, thank you for taking us around. Absolutely, Bill. Right. Good Thanks. deal. All right, yep. bye. I'm here now with Mike. Mike Colleen. Mike, what do you do for us? Yeah, I'm a technical solutions lead for subsea inspection. And and we were just talking to Ryan about about this clamp, and then about you know it has to be was it surveyed that he said or inspected? Yes, yeah, so this is our diver deployed phased array inspection tool. So it's good for about 300 meters. We've used it on a ton of campaigns in the, the Gulf of Mexico and the North Sea, down in Trinidad as well last year. So it's basically used for corrosion mapping the pipe. So before you get Corrosion to, mapping the pipe, what does that mean? So what it is, is you take a, a measurement on the pipe uh-huh. and it's at a known location. Yep. And then what we do is we use our encoded motors to then we move along and take another measurement and you build it up as like an ordnance survey map. So you then understand the contours on the inside of the pipe. So you can take remaining wall measurements you take that and you feed that back into your integrity data uh, so you can do a fitness for service assessment on the pipe and work out when you get to a point when you're going to need one of these so i mean there may be times though do you got can you inspect this and you may see something that looks like it's wrong but you you, you determine that it can wait maybe a couple of years or yep so what you'll have is you'll have your your criteria for for what the customer's looking for or not depending on their their pipeline 
So yeah, sometimes you're going to find something and they're going to say, that's not something that interests me right now. But we'll, we'll take a note of it, I'll go into a defect register and we'll come back and have a look at it later. All right, I see Ben Lore over here not doing anything, so let's go see what he thinks of the show. We're at the end of a Wednesday, day two of OTC, so come on. <laughs> Hello, Ben Lore, how are you? I'm good, Bill Mallon, how are you? So we come over here to ask you, I'm not interrupting any customer visit, am I? No, <laughs> nope. I'm just interrupting Oyvind eating a push-up pop. What do you think of the show so far? I think the booth is fantastic. I think the uh, foot traffic is significantly improved from two years ago. Uh, I think the customer to service company ratio is also significantly improved. I think I've talked to two customers per service uh, employee. Oh, good. Which is also very different than two years ago as well. Uh, so it's exciting to be here. Good meetings with the customers? F fantastic meetings, very high level customers, as well as the engineers and the technicians that use our services and equipment. So that's been great. Um, How about your feet? Are they sore? My, not, feet are, my feet are killing me. Not too bad. I, uh, but I lost a lot of weight, Bill. That's this true. This was that, a year ago. I'll true. be dying. Then nobody's going to no, recognize feel, you on this no, Elm video. They won't, but I'm feeling pretty good. All right, Ben, we really appreciate it. Thanks okay. a lot. Okay, Thanks, bye. Bill. Have a good one. Okay, so I'm here with Mike Ellis. Mike, I've introduced you on the helm before, but tell us who you are again and what you do. I'm Vice President for Subsea Projects, and I'm responsible for our offshore operations and construction, maintenance and repair, and also in our renewable space. And you're responsible for this? We are. We're building the Ocean Evolution. It's going to come out later this year, and it's going to be one of the best U.S. flag vessels in the Gulf of Mexico, and we are really excited so about it. So why is it going to be the best one? Why is it going to be the best? It is one of the largest vessels in size and weight, which is really important. Two cranes, 4,000 meter... Uh, lifting capacity and, and 4,000 meter ROV. So it's really got some of our best technology that we can put built around a really proven MT6022 marine design. So it's pretty exciting. And then there's something called the Jones Act. Yes. Why is that important? A lot of places around the world you have to work local vessels first. So in the United States they have the Jones Act and it's a law that requires transportation of equipment to be done with U.S. flag vessels, and there's a limited supply of those. This will be Jones Act qualified and coastwise qualified to transport oil field equipment to different U.S. ports, and it's really important in the market here in the U.S. It's All right, Mike, great. well, thank you for your time. No problem, All Bill. Right. Have a great OTC. All right, thanks. All right, well, look who I just happened to find in the booth. It's Kevin McAvoy, our former CEO, sir. How have you been? Excellent. And can't, can't complain. No complaints. And, you, and you, how's retirement before I start talking about the booth? It, it's great. Like the t-shirt says, life is good. And what's this? Uh, this is my, uh, my, my symbol of retirement. It looks a little, I'm not going to say it looks like Chris Hill, but I'm, I'm just saying it looks a little like Chris Hill. Yeah. Yeah, you could uh, also say to Chris that his looks a little like mine. That's so. true. That's true. <laughs> what do you think of the show so far? What do you think of our booth? The booth is great, as it always is. we got great stuff to show off here, great technology and uh, pretty snappy stuff. And uh, it's always always good, always a draw here. But. Well, I know people are chomping at the bit to talk to you, so I'm going to let you off the hook. But it was good to see you, sir. Hey, appreciate it. All right, Thank take you. care, Kevin. All right, All right bye. You. Bye. Well, overall, I think OTC 2018 has been a success for Oceaneering. We've had, as you've heard, we've had lots of great customers come in the booth, lots of, lots of interaction, people interested in our technology. So uh, we still have tomorrow to go. We shut down at 2 o'clock, but uh, I'm going to call this one a success.